Hey, in this short episode, we're going to be creating custom block models and transparent textures. So first of all, we want our code to be a little bit less rigid. So let's remove the numbers.py file and instead create a models folder, which basically contains a bunch of Python files, which contain what numbers.py used to contain. Naturally, you can download them straight from the GitHub repo linked down below. The content should be fairly familiar. We'll go over what these attributes up here are for later on. In the meantime, let's go to blocktype.py and add a new model argument to the init function which will default to our cube model. Then we just create two members for those two attributes and replace numbers by our model argument. Since some of our models aren't necessarily going to have the same amount of faces and thus texture coordinates as our original cube, let's add a quick check in the set block face function. Next, we just need to create our new blocks in the world.py file and change up the terrain generation a bit. And if we run this, you'll likely get an out of bounds exception. That's because chunk.py assumes all our blocks have exactly six faces, like the cube model. So we need to go here and explicitly tell it to only assume such when the block types is cube attribute is set, and otherwise just add as many faces as there are. And now if we run this, you'll see that invisible cube faces are still hidden, but faces touching blocks that are transparent are too. Uh, we don't want that. So to fix this, we need to make sure in the world.py's get block number function that the block type is not transparent before returning its number. This function could admittedly be named a bit better now that it only gets the block number of opaque blocks, but we'll leave that for our future selves to handle. Now we can see that faces touching transparent blocks aren't hidden like they were before. Next thing that jumps out as wrong is that the transparency in our textures is displayed as black, not transparency. Fixing this is pretty easy. Just go to the fragment shader, check if the texture color is transparent before multiplying by the shading value, and discard the fragment if so. One final problem you'll notice is that plants that are far away look ugly. That's because of the minification filter we have. If you recall in episode five, we added this line to make sure textures stayed sharp when magnified. We didn't do the same for minification because we actually want far away textures to look smooth, not sharp. Minification occurs when the fragment displayed on screen is larger than one of our textures texels, and is done by averaging the colors of our texels under that fragment in some way. This means that if we had a red texel, a blue texel, and two transparent texels under the same fragment, as is the case with our transparent textures from far away, we'd end up with a magenta color with 50% opacity and thus partial translucency. Unfortunately, partial translucency and OpenGL don't mix, so we'll have to sacrifice this minification blending for now. We'll find a permanent solution for this later on, but for now we'll just disable minification filtering, as it clearly looks much better, although we just added quite a bit of aliasing in the distance. Finally, you can have fun creating your own block models and playing around with textures. Here I've added the cactus block model, a few more blocks, and change the world generation a bit to arrive at this. Have a good one, peace.